Good morning. Coming up here on GMA Decision Day. The debt limit deal is heading to a crucial vote in the House in just hours. What we know and what's at stake. Also, the urgent search for those missing people in the Iowa building collapse. Officials are now saying that two people are still trapped inside. And everybody feels like a vacation. And there are some ways that travelers are saving money. It could save you big on airfare, but there's a bit of a risk. So we'll get into all of it. And then only on GMA, Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran here answering your real estate questions and why she thinks now is a good time to buy a home. It's all coming up on GMA. And coming up on the next hour of GMSA, the latest in your local news, weather and traffic. Taking a look at Transguide right now. The sun's slowly coming up at 281 and Hildebrand will be right back after this break. Good Wednesday morning. Taking a look out there with a live cam Looking beautiful as the sun rises at 68 degrees and expecting to be in the 80s, but we're going to be checking in with Mike about what we can expect today and the rest of your week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Wednesday, May 31st, as we get ready to turn the page on another month. That's right. The end of May and June's here, and at least we're not in the triple digits, right? That's right. Normally this type of year, we've already got the oven on around 325, huh. headed yeah. for broil, and Mike mm -hmm. Ostrich age has more on that. Now, if you are outside, it gets it gets pretty right. toasty. Mm -hmm. So even though we are still slightly below normal, but a lot of sunshine today. Today is going to be a carbon copy of yesterday, and then, you know, cut and paste again tomorrow. Tomorrow, then we do have some subtle changes coming in here, but boy, oh boy, a couple of clouds off to the east. Otherwise, just a gorgeous sunrise on tap. Now, once again, visibility. It was down to about a quarter mile in New Braunfels, came up to 10 miles and has dropped right back down to just a mile and a half. Bernie is doing pretty good, but there are hints of fog around there. Port SA at nine miles, seven Pleasanton. So again, we got to keep watching fog to develop and or not develop or visibilities just to go back and forth over the next couple of hours. 63 Bernie, uh, 66 there at Holotus and uh, Randolph also at 66 degrees and dew point temperatures are there. You notice the humidity when you step outside. They're not like outrageously high, so that's good news. And throughout the rest of today, again, same thing as yesterday. Plenty of sunshine out there. A couple of clouds, 88 for a high temperature. After tomorrow, just about the same thing on Friday. A couple of extra clouds around here, slightly warmer. Then we start to see a couple of rain chances work its way, work their way, I should say, on into the forecast, especially latter part of the weekend going into next week. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority after this morning's little mess out there. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, easy going for a lot of folks out there, Mike, and they have a great view at 281 at Hildebrand. You can see it looks like we're starting to see a little bit of the sun, uh, but you know what? We're not really seeing a lot of issues out there, so that's always a good uh, thing. But as you see the 281 at Hildebrand curve, make sure that you slow down before you approach it. Uh, we're not seeing any major issues reported, just stalled vehicles. We still have this one reported along Loop 410 eastbound at Morrison Boulevard. It's not really been causing any issues for drivers. In fact, it's off on the shoulder lane, so just make sure you check your vehicles before you get your morning commute rolling and make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights. Now a wide look at our map doesn't show anything. As I mentioned, we have a lot of construction, which we can talk about a little bit later on, but uh, for the most part, our commute has been pretty easy for a lot of folks. And if you're traveling in this morning, the same trend continues along I 10 eastbound. That journey from Bernie should take you about 24 minutes. If you're heading into the downtown area, no need to hurry. If you're traveling in from Boulevard 281 southbound, we see about a 26 minute drive time and it's not too awful from New Braunfels along 35 southbound because because we see about 26 minutes for our neighbors up there. But let's get it back here on Transguide again. Great shot at 281 at Hildebrand. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and an update on some of those road closures coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, sir. Right now we want to get back to late breaking news. We've been following this morning. San Antonio police are actively searching a neighborhood north of downtown for a person who was who shot a man. It happened about an hour ago on Jackson Street near San Pedro and I-35. Katrina Weber is there live. Katrina, is there an update on the man who was shot? Yeah, police told us that man was taken to a hospital. He was shot in his upper left arm, and they say that he's in a, a serious, possibly critical condition. It happened right here behind me. This roped off area is the actual crime scene where he was shot. Now, police tell us he was coming from a convenience store across San Pedro, walking home, and that is when he was approached by the gunman who tried to rob him, someone who demanded all his property. They say the victim told him he didn't have anything to give, and that's when the robber shot 
shot him. That person did take off running, and police have been searching this area ever since. They're not just here in this roped off area. They've been all around this neighborhood with their flashlights. They had a dog out earlier and a helicopter overhead, but so far they have not found the gunman. Again, that victim is in the hospital getting treatment for that gunshot wound. It happened just before 5 o'clock this morning. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, San Antonio police left with a lot of questions after a man was shot on the city's west side. It happened just after 3.30 this morning on West Commerce at Hortensia Street. Police tell us two men shot the victim in front of a home, once in the head, once in the arm. He was taken to a hospital in critical condition. So far, we understand no arrests have been made. An arrest has been made in a deadly shooting case that happened less than two weeks ago outside a local bar. So this is 34-year-old Noah James Patterson, and police say surveillance footage helped investigators track him down. We are told the shooting happened after two groups of people were fighting in the parking lot outside the private social club. Now that's on UTSA Boulevard near Vance Jackson. Police say that Patterson pulled out a gun that day and shot another man in the stomach. That man later died and Patterson is charged with homicide and three counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now to the courtroom where testimony will continue today in the murder retrial of Mark Howerton. He's accused of killing a Trinity University student. Yesterday, jurors heard from the victim, Kaylee Mandani's best friend. They also saw cell phone evidence that showed where Mandani and Howerton were before she was brought to the hospital. We have complete coverage on KSAT.com. Happening today, jury selection will begin in the trial of a former Florida Sheriff's deputy. He is charged with failing to confront the shooter who killed 14 students and three staff members at a Parkland High School five years ago. Now, former Broward County Deputy Scott Peterson remained outside a three-story classroom building at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School during the attack back in 2018. He is charged with seven counts of felony child neglect. He retired, retired shortly after that shooting and was then fired. Another story I'm following this morning, a truly wild scene from a highway in southern Georgia. A car going airborne after using the back of a flat tow truck as a ramp. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the amazing video. A police body camera capturing the wild moment. A car traveling down a highway in Georgia launches off the back of a tow truck at full speed. The car going airborne, narrowly avoiding the tow truck driver walking in front of the truck. The car then flipping before crashing back down to earth and into another vehicle. Deputies then rushing to the aid of the driver. Deputies were there responding to another crash last week in Lowndes County when the shocking moment unfolded right in front of them. This morning, officials confirm a 21-year-old woman from Tallahassee was behind the wheel of that car. She survived with serious injuries and is still recovering in the hospital in stable condition. The crash is still under investigation, but all we're worried about is that she heals and uh, that she gets better. A deputy was hit by flying debris and suffered minor injuries and was released from the hospital the same day. Officials are reminding people to remain attentive when traveling at high speeds. I would just really like for people who watch the video to see how easy that it can happen and do more to prevent it because in the end, that's what we're all aiming for is for everyone to make it to their destination safely. Rian and Ali, ABC News, New York. The world's top artificial intelligence experts are now warning of human extinction. 350 people, including CEOs, signed a new public statement expressing grave concern that artificial intelligence could wipe out humanity if it gets into the wrong hands. They say mitigating the risk should be a global priority. Right now, 608, 68 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up later on Good Morning America. Oh, afraid that I was gonna die and don't see my kids, my grandkids. The building collapse in Iowa coming up later on this morning. GMA, who is still missing after an apartment building, came crashing to the ground. And after the break, some of the news stories trending right now on KSAT.com. Looking out there with a live cam, beautiful shot this Wednesday morning. We're at 68 degrees and expecting to hear more from Mike of what we can expect throughout the weekend. We'll be right back. 
And welcome back at 612. It is being called a nationwide crisis. ER doctors want the public and politicians to know about the patient boarding problem. Patient boarding is where admitted patients are held in the emergency department in ER rooms when there are no beds available. Those inpatient beds are sometimes filled with people who need to be getting care elsewhere, oftentimes as mental health patients waiting for referrals or transfers. It is an issue here at home as well, but San Antonio hospitals partner with each other and third parties to assess open beds. Local law enforcement has also been trained in mental health triage. Decide if that patient needs to go to the emergency room or they could be directed right to the mental health facility, psychiatric hospital for evaluation and treatment. Nationwide funding could help create similar partnerships, virtual psychiatric care, or more substance abuse programs. Now, the American College of Emergency Physicians is asking lawmakers to pass the Improving Mental Health Access from the Emergency Department Act. It would give hospitals critical funding to implement the programs that work best for them. Across Texas, students are learning a life-saving technique called Stop the Bleed. One Northside ISD junior took the training to the next level and made it his focus for a project to help others. Hector Frausto took the training this year as part of an independent study, study rather, mentor, mentorship program with San Antonio Metro Health. As a part of his project, Frausto made pre-training videos for students taking Stop the Bleed courses. He said it's vital. More people in general public know what to do should the worst happen because those first few minutes of a traumatic bleeding incident could mean the difference between life and death. Hopefully you have at least one or two people in that classroom that can be like, okay, give me someone sure, give me a towel, like let's start putting pressure because you will end up saying that person's life. Northside ISD recently held a Stop the Bleed training event for students and staff to get certified. Frausto says his goal is to have more training courses both in the fall and the spring of the next school year. With school out for the summer, pools across the city will soon be filled with families, and that means it's also time that we have a shortage of lifeguards. Now, it's not just here in San Antonio that's feeling the strain. Cities across the country are trying to come up with ways to deal with the lack of lifeguards. So San Antonio is boosting its starting pay to $17.50 per hour. Boston offering a $1,200 hiring bonus. New York say they are simplifying its swim test and offering a bonus as well. So far, there's already been repercussions in New Jersey. Despite the efforts of bystanders, a teen drowned this weekend there on a beach with no lifeguard. All made a, a line with their hands to try to extend to get this kid, and they pulled him out. According to the U.S. Life Saving Association, drowning is the fifth leading cause of accidental death in the U.S. Experts believe one way to fix the lifeguard shortage is to get young people excited about it at an early age. So you can learn about lifeguarding in San Antonio by visiting saparksandrec.com. Back here at home, 615. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I saw a flashing light still there at Loop 10, Port 10 at Morrison. That's right, and this is in the eastbound lanes. This is that stalled vehicle that we mentioned a little bit earlier in the morning. Uh, it's not really causing an issue with traffic, but you can see that we have a lot of folks that are traveling in those eastbound lanes this early in the morning. So make sure to slow down as you approach those flashing lights like this driver's doing and actually moving over to the other lane. Uh, looks like this is not causing an issue, as I mentioned, but check your vehicles before you get the morning commute rolling. We do have some debris also detected along I-10 eastbound. This is not too far from crossroads. You can see that it's not causing an issue for drivers, but I noticed that our friends at Transguide were actually panning the camera around to see if we can get a view of the conditions out there. But the good news is we're not seeing an impact again with any congestion out there. But we're likely going to see some slowdowns as the morning commute does get rolling minute by minute and especially with some construction taking place. Remember, I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the week here along FM 1535 Northwest Military Highway. The sidewalk improvements continue all the way up until Friday, June 2nd. The work starts pretty early 7 in the morning so crews may or already be getting ready to start that work should end around 6 in the evening we'll see various line closures in both directions that's from loop 1604 to Hebner Road but you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic and that has there is a full list of closures on that website but other than that just be on the lookout for any of those flashing lights look like uh, the work has wrapped up here at Fort Tenant Morrison that's good mm -hmm. thumbs good. up thumbs up thanks Stephen thank Two you thumbs up
So, so a lot of kids are out of school, some yep. are still in, but uh, they're enjoying a you know decent week for the most part. Yeah, very nice to get outside. If you have uh, any outdoor activities, you got to cut the grass, something like that. Earlier on in the day is pretty good. I was out doing some guard work yesterday in the afternoon. It's like, whoa, Nelly. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. mowed yesterday too. Yeah, oh, it, wow. it gets hot very quickly. So lots of water, lots of sunscreen. All right, our trend for slightly better than average odds of rain will continue. This is going to be next week as we get in toward the 6th through the 12th of June. So this doesn't mean it's going to rain, but the odds of having better than average amount of rain uh, is still sticking around here. And uh, let me jump back here. Then as far as temperatures, yeah, still better than average odds of staying slightly below normal with temperatures in that same time period. And then jumping further ahead, maybe not quite as good of odds, but still average, a little bit better than that. As far as rain and temperatures, this is not the greatest thing to see, but uh, this is saying that temperatures may be slightly or leaning toward perhaps the uh, the warmer side of things. And once we get in toward the middle part of June, uh, again, today our normal high temperature is 90 and then tomorrow 91 and we'll be in the low approaching mid 90s as we uh, get in toward uh, go through the month of June. I should say temperatures throughout the next seven days, though, are going to be at or below normal readings. And this is when the better rain chances come on in here by later in the uh, the weekend. First of all, great looking picture and this time in the month when the moon is approaching full, when it's full, it rises just as the sun is going down. So there's the uh, waning, excuse me, waxing gibbous moon that was coming up yesterday. The moon, love you to the moon and back. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect shot. Got a few clouds that all of a sudden uh, tried to slide on in here and sort of obscuring that little bit of the uh, sunrise. We do have, well, New Braunfels has been going back and forth. Just when I last looked about five minutes ago, it was down to about two miles visibility. Now it's back up to 10 miles visibility. So we're going to go back and forth with some of this fog throughout the rest of the morning. We jump ahead to the weekend and we've got Saturday. Chance for rain, especially later on in the day. One or two showers around here. Not a great chance for a couple of showers, but then we're going to be on the lookout for one of those nighttime storm complexes. This uh, in particular, this computer model wants to get that to move through in the overnight hours. And then Sunday, we will have a better chance to see a few scattered showers around the area, and that'll be the case into Sunday night, Monday, as well as Tuesday. So this is kind of living up to what that Climate Prediction Center forecast was for next week, that slightly better chance of rain going into the middle part of next week, and also those temperatures being slightly lower. So once again, today, tomorrow, got a couple of clouds out there right now, but we've got sunshine in the forecast, upper 80s, 90 tomorrow to start off the month of June. It's already June. Good Lord. <laughs> and uh, 90 on Saturday, that small chance of a shower on Saturday. We'll watch out for things Saturday night and then going into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, slightly better chances for some rain around here. Mike, I, I told you how many days till Christmas earlier uh, in a commercial break. Do you, do you recall the number off the top of your head? Please don't. Please don't. Over 200. Over 200. You got time. Yeah, you have some plenty time. of time. Yeah, we didn't actually say the number, so I'm still I'm still in his good graces. <laughs> 620, 68 degrees. I am. Yeah. A I new am. travel trend is gaining popularity. Booking a flight with a layover in a city that is the intended destination. After the break, why experts say you may want to think twice before jumping on that trend. Choosing a treatment for your chronic migraine, 15 or more headache days a month, each lasting four hours or more, can be overwhelming. So ask your doctor about Botox. Botox prevents headaches in adults with chronic migraine before they even start. It's the number one prescribed branded chronic migraine treatment. So far, more than 5 million Botox treatments have been given to over 850,000 chronic migraine patients. Effects of Botox may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness can be signs of a life-threatening condition. Side effects may include allergic reactions, neck and injection site pain, fatigue, and headache. Don't receive Botox if there's a skin infection. Tell your doctor your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions and medications, including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. In a survey, 92% of current users said they wish they talked to their doctor and started Botox sooner. So ask your doctor if Botox is right for you. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Botox.
In this morning's GMA First Look, an important reality check on the travel trend gaining steam online. It's called skip lagging. If you get caught, you could get in a lot of trouble. Here's how it works. Let's say a nonstop flight from New York to L.A. is 500 bucks, but a flight to Seattle with a layover in L.A. is 300. Some travelers are skipping that second flight altogether and just staying in L.A. Though passengers might be excited at the prospect of saving money, experts warn GMA there are potentially huge consequences. Skip lagging is a very risky bet. They do reserve the right to go after you for more money. They could cancel your frequent flyer account. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on the potential risks, but also hear from the people behind the skip lagging movement who say the money saved is well worth it. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Homeowners insurance going through the roof again. Rates jumped nearly 11 percent in Texas last year. And analysts say you can expect nearly as much again this year. Part of the reason, extreme weather. Texas gets more than its fair share of hail, tornadoes, even ice storms. On top of that, and now it costs even more to repair or replace damaged homes. Do get a loyalty benefit for sticking around with companies, but it's not as great as the benefit from getting an overall lower price from shopping around. Another big saver is to raise your deductible. Raising them from 500 to 1,000 can save you about 25%. And be sure to check for discounts. You can save about 30% if you bundle your car and home insurance with the same carrier. And some insurance companies offer discounts for installing security cameras or leak detectors. Time now, 625 and 68 degrees for now. Checking the road with TransGuide. This is one of our new favorite shots of the uh, Tower of the Americas there. I-37 at the Alabama Dome. Traffic is flowing nicely on the main lanes of I-37 in both directions. One hurdle down and now another to go for the debt ceiling deal. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington with the bipartisan backlash the measure is now facing hours before a House floor vote. It was a beautiful sunrise, but we've had some clouds roll in the last 30 or 40 minutes looking out by the airport. And we have a traffic incident that's caused big problems on I-10 at Crossroads. We'll talk to Stephen in just one moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 31st of May. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. The clouds should help with the heat again. I would think so. Yes. Well, uh, they're not going to be sticking around that much this afternoon, though. We'll have a couple of them hanging around here. And yeah, these just moved in. We had a lot of clear skies and there's still a lot of clear skies around the area. So it's a kind of a small batch of clouds, but right over town as of right now. And temperatures are at 67 degrees, 2.65. So we have dropped a degree since last hour. A little bit of a breeze there out of the east. And as far as fog, nothing is showing up. We've had those spots here and there. New Braunfels has kind of been going back and forth all morning long, but again, nothing in the uh, metropolitan area right now. Mid 60s on average. Stinson is the uh, well, Canyon Lake also 70 and 71 there at Stinson. The only readings in the 70s right now and humidity again is not really that bad. You know, given what we could see this time of year, so dew points mid 60s on average, muggy enough out there. And if you're outside at all with all this sunshine, 88 high temperatures, seasonally hot, normal is uh, 80, excuse me, is 90. And with some of that humidity, you want to, you know, avoid being in the direct sun as much as possible. Today is pretty much a repeat of yesterday. Tomorrow we repeat again. Friday for the most part, a couple of more clouds hanging around here. Then we'll talk about some rain chances that are going to start to work their way into the picture as we go on in through the weekend. Those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. All right, so big problem out there on the yeah. uh, northwest side. You know, we saw it along I-10 uh, going out toward Crossroads, Mike. Uh, we almost saw uh, it was a line of uh, textile crews out there. Now our friends over at Transkind have been panning the camera around. You can see what they're doing right now is just getting a wider shot of the conditions out there, which look a lot better. But earlier, as I mentioned, we had a line of those trucks out there, and this is all due to some road debris that was detected. You know, really wasn't causing an issue with traffic, but just check out how busy it is there at Crossroads. We have a lot of folks that are getting out there this early in the morning, and that is because we have entered morning rush. But the good news is we are not seeing any delays out there. Whatever that debris was, looks like it's been cleared out. And again, traffic's moving along there along I-10 eastbound without any trouble. But earlier, yeah, you should have seen that shot. We had a 
line of those crews out there. But unfortunately, not the only issue I'm tracking this morning. I have to take a drive now over here to our latest problem. This is at 35 Southbound at US 90. We have a crash that's been reported in that area. This is not causing an issue either, but we'll show you a shot of the conditions in just a moment as we give you a wide look at the metropolitan area. What we're going to start to see a lot more of now are those slowdowns. And it's going to again, it's always starts here, guys. US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville, I would say now is the time to do it because we can expect to see some bumper to bumper traffic out there. Normal congestion is expected. But as I mentioned, let's get a view of the conditions out there at 35 southbound at US 90. Um, it does look like we have a vehicle, possibly two involved out there, but we also see a Texas hero truck on the scene. So that's some good news. We'll find out what's going on there and give you an update coming up a little bit later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Our top story this morning after narrowly passing a House committee vote, the debt ceiling deal is on track for a crucial floor vote. Some hardline Republicans and progressive Democrats alike are blasting that bill. The president and House Speaker are now rallying their parties to back their deal. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, the bill's next test is expected tonight. With the threat of default looming and hours before the debt limit deal brokered by the president and House Speaker faces a pivotal vote, Many progressives, including me, lean no. Not one Republican should vote for this deal. Yes. Not right. one. Many progressive Democrats and conservative Republicans are coming out against the deal, each accusing their leadership of making too many concessions. Still, the Republican-led House Rules Committee cleared the measure for a floor vote. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The bill calls for suspending the debt ceiling until January 2025, clawing back $30 billion in COVID relief, rescinding $20 billion in IRS funding, ending the federal student loan repayments freeze in August, and adding new work requirements for some Americans on food assistance. The White House and House Republican leaders now sprinting to stir up support. Our senior team made individual calls to all House Democratic leadership. Members from all across the conference shared their support for this important bill. In the Senate, though top leaders Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell are backing the deal, there are breaks in the ranks. I have a lot of concerns about this agreement. It's about taking food away from people who are hungry. I think the Biden-McCarthy debt deal is a disaster for the country. A final vote is expected later tonight. The bill needs 218 votes to pass, so look for the White House and congressional Republican leaders alike to continue whipping up votes until the last minute. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. The bipartisan deal to raise the debt ceiling moving forward and people who rely on government aid for food would be affected. Right now, those receiving help from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, who are considered able-bodied, do not have kids, and are 18 to 49 years old, are required to work or participate in a training program for at least 80 hours a month to receive extended benefits. Under the debt ceiling deal agreement, the rule would gradually bring the maximum age to 54 by 2025 and expire in 2030. San Antonio Food Bank CEO Eric Cooper says stricter rules could force some SNAP recipients to turn to other resources like our food bank. As of April, nearly 122,000 people here in Bear County receive SNAP benefits. We also want to mention several area school districts will be providing meal assistance for students this summer. And some of those districts include SAISD, NEISD, Southside ISD, and IDEA Public Schools. You can find all that information on our website at kset.com. 635, 68 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. And just ahead, how one UTSA graduate plans to use his degree to help his home country of El Salvador. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA Decision Day. The debt limit deal is heading to a crucial vote in the House in just hours. What we know and what's at stake. Also, the urgent search for those missing people in the Iowa building collapse. Officials are now saying that two people are still trapped inside. And everybody feels like a vacation. And there are some ways that travelers are saving money. It could save you big on airfare, but there's a bit of a risk. So we'll get into all of it. And then only on GMA, Shark Tank star Barbara Corcoran here answering your real estate questions and why she thinks now is a good time to buy a home. It's all coming up on GMA. 
As graduation season comes to an end, we're introducing you to more great graduates from universities here in the Alamo City. This morning we hear from a UTSA grad who did not let the adversities of coming to the U.S. as a preteen stop him from achieving his dreams. R.J. Marquez has the story. One of the memories that I remember is my grandma one time uh, after our school telling me, you need to leave to the United States. Nixon Maldonado spent the first 12 years of his life in El Salvador. That was his home. But in order to have more opportunities, his family knew they had to come to the United States. An education, better economic opportunities, and um, being able to to dream. Once he got to Texas, he noticed something he never saw in El Salvador, skyscrapers. This is what sparked his interest in becoming an architect. That's something that I've never seen in my country because I lived in the rural areas. After getting his associate's degree at SAC, he moved on to UTSA and became a member of the College of Engineering and Integrated Design. While he was there, he took part in research projects about bringing more natural light into our buildings. Architecture, I believe, has the power to change the space and transform it into a, a place that will become essential for humanity. Maldonado hopes to take what he has learned from UTSA back to his home country to help build more sustainable homes and buildings. I want to go back to El Salvador and give this knowledge and uh, provide these spaces for future generations so our country can strive. And he hopes to get his master's degree in architecture in the near future. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 641. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, guys, things have been moving along just okay here at 281 at Hildebrand, but we had some issues earlier that have cleared out. US 98 couples, you can see east and westbound lanes getting a little bit busier now that more folks are waking up and getting the morning started. Uh, just watch out because we did have a crash reported right here at 35 southbound at US 90. That has already cleared out, so it was a pretty quick uh, uh, incident that cleared up, but you're not really seeing an impact in those southbound lanes. But the northbound lanes already getting a little bit busier out there, starting to see a little bit more of that yellow and orange. And as we give you a wide look at our map, now we have a few slowdowns reported again. US 90 traffic moving at 13 miles per hour there. Already picking up a little bit of that slowdown as well along the northwest side in Holotus with traffic along 1604 moving around just 41 miles per hour and 35 southbound already at 35 miles per hour. So expect some delays as the commute does get going this morning. But you see it right there at our trans guide cameras 35 at Maine. The upper and lower levels are already getting busier with traffic. But uh, you know, we did have some incidents reported that cleared out pretty quickly. So that's the good news. Other than that, uh, if you have to hit the roads in the next few minutes, you shouldn't have anything other than congestion to expect. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. I like this picture you have coming up. This is one of those pictures just because. Oh, yeah. Some guests at your door. Trick or treat. <laughs> and they're hungry. However, what's wrong with this picture? Um, um, they don't have trick or treat bags? <laughs> uh oh. Okay, let's see. Think Mike's about it. Like, the voltage on this cord is wrong. Oh. No. <laughs> what is it, Mike? They're not in a row. Ah, oh, oh, ha, 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 ha. yeah. <laughs> I'll be here the rest of the week. Anyway, <laughs> clouds have moved on in. We had a lot of clear skies about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, and there are still a lot of clear skies being reported around the area. But yeah, this uh, layer of some uh, stratus clouds moved on in here. And visibility, we don't have any problems with any fog right now. Hints of it here and there. We'll still be on the lookout, but clouds kind of kind of help out to prevent some of that from uh, forming up. And um, we're going to be seeing a lot of sunshine throughout the day. We'll make it up to 82 degrees at noon. Of course, some of these morning clouds are going to be on the uh, stubborn side, and then we top off at 88 later on this afternoon. Again, a couple of clouds out there, plenty of sunshine, lots of shade, lots of water if you're going to be outside doing anything. Satellite picture right now, and even this looping on through really doesn't show any of those uh, low clouds. They just have popped up here and around the country. Again, there's not a heck of a lot going on. You know, this is the time of year you don't see all those big giant storm systems moving around uh, the area. You don't see the huge roller coaster action in the upper level steering winds. Uh, we do have a low out there to the west of us, but what's dominating things as of right now is that high and that's it's not plunked down right on top of us to really push down in the atmosphere and heat us up, but close enough. And that's what is giving us all of these, uh, well, a lot of sunshine and keeping us dry for the next couple of days. So that pretty much stays in place through the rest of the week. Then we head on into late Friday and the weekend. The high kind of drifts on out of the picture a little bit more, and we just get these little ripples 
kind of wrapping around that low. That's going to be moving on in here, and it's not like it's that low sitting on top of us, but again, just these little disturbances to come in and give us the rain chances, albeit 20-30% chance of rain Sunday and then going into the first part of next week. But the nice thing is that's going to be the situation going into at least the middle of next week as well. So again, the high is pretty much out of the picture. We get the little disturbances kind of sliding on in here, even a perhaps a bit of a northwesterly flow. And you know, that means with those unpredictable little little glitches that come on through like what uh, was the case on Monday. So that's a, an encouraging forecast going into at least the middle part of next week. Now, as far as rain chances around here Friday, we will have a few more clouds and then going into Saturday. Yeah, even a couple of extra clouds here. We're going to have to watch out for perhaps a nighttime storm complex to develop out there to the northwest and work its way on in here. And then that would be in through the morning hours of Sunday and then just a couple of scattered showers around here throughout the day on Sunday. A little bit better chance of uh, just some scattered rain around Sunday and then going into the first part of next week. So temperatures once again, we're just barely you know, within a degree or two of normal and on the uh, the low side of that, which is nice. And that's the case through the rest of the week and Saturday. A couple of extra clouds around on Saturday, a couple of showers, a little bit better chance of rain Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I think that holds temperatures back down in the uh, mid 80s. And by the first part of next week, normals, low temperatures, mid, low, excuse me, low 90s. So we'll be roughly five below normal on average. Not bad. And when we not, do see the 90s here. Yeah, not bad at all. Okay, we'll take it, Mike. Thank you. 646, 68 degrees. And important news if you struggle with productivity and procrastination tomorrow on GMSA. Why a technique called body doubling might help. We'll tell you how it works. Is that like where there's instantly a twin of yourself and <laughs> the two of you together can tackle all deadlines? I mean, that sounds like a plan, right? The movie oh, Multiplicity, right. I remember that one. Uh, outside with live camera right now, yeah, we went from sunrise and clear skies to quite a few clouds. We'll be back. 10 to 7, have you ever been nervous about being pulled over because you were alone or it was dark out or maybe even it was a dangerous neighborhood? Well, the San Antonio NAACP branch recently partnered with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to raise awareness of what you should do if you're stopped by an officer. Melissa Cole met with both organizations to find out what brought about this partnership and how it could benefit anyone on the roadways. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, you all. I'm standing outside of the Barber Jordan Community Center because this is where I sat down and I spoke with Dr. Hudspeth, Gregory Hudspeth. He is the president of the NAACP San Antonio branch chapter. And we sat down and we discussed how frightening or overwhelming it can be when getting pulled over by an officer. Now, with summer underway and school out, there will be more people on the roads, including teenagers. And in, in an effort to reduce risk of harmful, negative or traumatic encounters with officers for all people, especially people of color. Member of the NAACP got together with the Bear County Sheriff's Office to create a video informing people on what you should do and what you should not do when being pulled over by a law enforcement officer. Take a listen to this video clip. If you're in an area that is dark, you can turn on your hazards and drive to an area that is well lit, such as a gas station. Once you've stopped, Always roll your windows down to ensure no views are obstructed for the law enforcement officer. If you have a weapon in your vehicle, let the law enforcement officer know that you have a weapon and where it is located, but never reach for it. Now, the purpose of sharing these tips is, of course, to create a safe environment for both the driver and the officer. We want to do is ensure that we have this open line of communication with law enforcement here in San Antonio, Bear County, and so that our young people will know what to do and what not to do, because it's much easier for us to deal with these issues before they occur than after they occur. Yes, that video was filled with so much good information. I even learned some things watching the video. Um, if you are very afraid, if you're frightened, or if you're just not sure if the police officer or the deputy is legitimate, you can always call 911 when being pulled over. It is completely lawful to do so for your safety and for the safety of the officer. We will post the video in its, in its full capacity on our website at ksat.com if you would like to share it with your family, your children, 
open or maybe you would like to check it out yourself. But for now, reporting outside of the Barbara Jordan Community Center, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. House Republicans just concluded a very productive and respectful conference meeting. House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik speaking on the debt ceiling bill just after it moved past a key hurdle. The bill, the result of a deal between House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and President Joe Biden, cleared the House Rules Committee Tuesday. Members from all across the conference shared their support for this important bill. The bill heads to the House floor Wednesday for debate and a final passage vote. If it passes, it goes to the Senate. But the time frame for getting the bill to President Biden's desk is very tight. The Treasury Department says if the debt ceiling isn't raised by June 5th, the nation will no longer be able to pay all its financial obligations. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle, many of them moderates, appear ready to vote for the deal to avoid default. However, ahead of Tuesday's GOP conference meeting, there were still strong voices opposing the bill on the Republican side. And you're a firm no. Unless something changes on the bill, yeah, absolutely, I'm triple no. And some dissenting voices among Democrats. No, I and many other progressives lean no. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Reed Binion. In today's Tech Bites, the world's top AI experts are now warning of human extinction. 350 people, including CEOs, signed a new public statement expressing concern that artificial intelligence could wipe out humanity if it gets into the wrong hands. They say mitigating the risk should be a global priority. Twitter is expanding its fact-checking program to include images. The change was sparked by a recent viral and fake post claiming to show an explosion near the Pentagon. The company says users will be able to put the images or the tweet itself in context. And finally, Amazon is getting rid of all of its Alexa-enabled celebrity voices. Amazon says those who paid to have the voices of Samuel L. Jackson, Shaq, or Melissa McCarthy can get a refund upon request. Jackson's voice will stop working next week, Shaq and McCarthy in September. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. All right, let's get one last look at traffic. Well, we have entered morning rush and things are moving along just fine for the most part of for anyone that's hitting the roads. There's 37 at Alamo Dome. As Mark said, it's our new favorite shot from Transguide, but uh, thankfully a lot of these shots look great. Looks like we saw that stalled vehicle out at 410 at Morrison. It could be an abandoned vehicle, so just make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights, but we can expect to see a lot more of those slowdowns. 16 miles per hour along US 90 just went down to 14 in the eastbound lanes. 24 along State Highway 151 eastbound if you're heading into the downtown area and for our friends up in Helotus, it should be about a 20 miles per hour right now is what you can expect if you are hitting the roads in the next few minutes. So slowdowns are expected as we've entered morning rush. Thankfully not seeing any delays with any of these travel times for any of the folks that are hitting the roads in the next few minutes. Just pack some patience through some of those construction spots. We'll have more coming up later on throughout GMA. And we are starting to see the sun squeeze through some of those clouds that moved on in here. Temperature stands at 68 degrees, low 60s in the hill country and 88 high temperature. But what it was yesterday, a lot of sunshine out there. Same thing tomorrow. Got a couple of showers around Saturday and then a better, slightly better chance of rain Sunday into next week. All right. Thank you, Mike. And thanks for joining us today. Make it a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.